Do I need a gimbal as a travel filmmaker? That was a question I asked myself a lot when I started taking my travel filmmaking more seriously. I wanted to achieve those floating cinematic shots that you see from creators like Sam Calder, Peter McKinnon and Craig Adams. So last year I took the plunge and I bought one. I looked around, did my research and eventually settled on the Feutech A1000. So I've had this gimbal for about six months now and I've taken it with me on a few trips. So I wanted to make a video talking about my experiences using it and whether I would recommend getting a gimbal to other travel filmmakers. So the question is, do you need a gimbal as a travel filmmaker? And the short answer is no, you don't. Let me tell you why. For me, any new piece of kit has to pass four tests to earn its place in my travel bag. And those four tests are quality, price, accessibility, and portability. Let's start with quality. With gimbals, you get what you pay for. So unless you have an unlimited budget, you're essentially deciding how much quality you're willing to sacrifice in order to meet your budget. According to most reviews that I'd read online, the A1000 was a good quality gimbal for less than half the price of some of the other gimbals on the market. But after six months using it, I have to admit I'm a bit underwhelmed. I'm not sure whether I just expected too much of it, but the results have been a bit hit and miss. Last summer, I brought it with me on a trip to the Isle of Portland in Dorset where I'd hoped to capture these smooth floating shots of Amy walking along the cliffs. But the results were disappointing. I soon discovered that this gimbal is almost completely unusable in wind. It would jerk, wobble, tilt and shake as the motor fought against the wind and completely ruined some of my shots. So when I got home and looked back at the footage, I was really disappointed to see that very little of what I'd shot was usable. In more controlled conditions, however, the results are much better. I shot a promo for a friend's tattoo studio and the gimbal worked perfectly there. I also took it with me on a trip to the south of France towards the end of the year, and I filmed my friends walking around a market. It was a bright sunny day with no wind at all, and again, the gimbal worked perfectly fine. So like I said, it's been a bit hit and miss. In controlled conditions, it works great, but in bad conditions, it's practically unusable. As a travel filmmaker, you can never guarantee good conditions, so it's a bit of a gamble to take this with you. And obviously I can only speak on behalf of this particular model in terms of quality. I have heard very good things about the Zion Crane, but that will cost you about £200 more. And that brings me on to my second test, which is price. At £250, this is the cheapest of all of the motorised DSLR gimbals on the market. Now I know that £250 isn't exactly affordable, but compared to all the other gimbals on the market, it was the least unaffordable. If you're willing to pay more, you could probably get a much higher quality gimbal than this. Like I said, the Zion Crane will set you back about £450, and the next step up, the Zion Crane 2, will cost you more than £600. For that price, you could buy a camera body or a new lens. So we're not talking about small figures here. Personally, I wouldn't spend any more than £250 on a gimbal. Even if I was assured perfect performance from the Zion Crane, I still don't think I would buy it. I just don't think any results are worth spending that much money. So unless you have an unlimited budget, price is definitely something to consider. Now my next test is accessibility. In other words, how easy is this to use in a demanding environment? To illustrate the issue with this, I'll first show you how to balance a gimbal. So this is how long it takes to balance a gimbal. See, I can't even do it. Now this is what a balanced gimbal should look like. And that whole process took me about four minutes in total. Now imagine having to do that on location. Every time you move on to a new location, you're gonna have to dismantle this, put it back into your bag, move on, and then rebalance it again, wasting another four minutes at every location. And now those four minutes over the course of a day are gonna add up. And that's a lot of time wasted that could be better spent shooting. On top of that, when you're in the middle of a forest or on the side of a mountain, you're not always gonna be able to find a flat surface to balance your gimbal. So it's not just time consuming, it's also impractical. And that's gonna happen with whatever brand of gimbal you decide to buy. And that brings me on to my final test, which is portability. Probably the most important test for travel filmmakers. For me, this is the gimbal's biggest failure. It's big, it's heavy, and it's awkwardly shaped. But don't worry, it comes with this handy travel case. I'm obviously not gonna be bringing this with me, so I have to try and fit it into my backpack. So the gimbal folds down, into this awkward shape, which just about fits into my bag, but it doesn't really leave much room for anything else. It's just a lot of hassle to transport around, and I don't like hassle. So in conclusion, would I use this gimbal again? 
The honest answer is yes and no. I brought this with me on a recent trip to Iceland and I left the gimbal in the hotel the entire trip and I didn't miss it at all. For me, this was the biggest indicator that it's surplus to requirements and that I don't really need it as part of my travel gear. Saying that, I would still probably use it for commercial or branded videos where I have more control over the conditions and the schedule. But for travel filmmaking, when I just don't have time to keep balancing it and rebalancing it, I'll be leaving it at home. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on traveling with a gimbal. Drop a comment below and let me know what your experiences have been like. Do you think it's worth having a gimbal as a travel filmmaker? And maybe you've used the Zion Crane. If you have, let me know if your experiences have been any different to mine. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you've found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>